Hello and welcome. It is great to have you here today. We are streaming live on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and even Twitch. If you're a marketer or an entrepreneur that's determined to tell a story that sells, then boy, have I got a treat for you today. We're going to talk about how you can generate demand and accelerate sales pipeline with storytelling. We're going to teach you how to do this without having to rely on any specialist entertainment frameworks. You know what I mean. We won't be teaching about the hero's journey or the seven types of story or Kurt Vonnegut's eight tips or Pixar's tips. You get the point. <laughs> you know that great storytelling can help your business, but it's hard to find the time to become a master storyteller. You don't have time for all this stuff. It's not your fault. Most of the storytelling advice that's out there is for entertainment storytelling. You simply don't have the time to become a master storyteller, but you do want to benefit from it. So what if I could help you by telling you there's one single thing you could do to help with all that? That single thing is business storytelling. And my goal for this presentation is to help two types of people with business storytelling. For the natural born storytellers here today, we will show you how to take your whole company on the storytelling journey. And for those utterly new to business storytelling, we are going to share some simple frameworks to help you get going with storytelling today. In the next 60 minutes, my goal is to get you to believe that business storytelling is the key to unlocking unrealized business profitability. I'm going to show you my proprietary frameworks that will help make it simple for you to achieve that very result. As a marketer and entrepreneur myself, I know how much frustration there can be in business. For over 20 years in corporate America, I held a variety of marketing roles. I was even chief storyteller for a business division of Microsoft. And for the past five years, I have had the absolute pleasure of leading the charge here at Go Narrative where our mission is to spread the word of storytelling in business. But for years, I, even as a passionate storyteller, I struggled to apply storytelling in business. So if somebody's as passionate about it as I am and, and I struggled, I, I know exactly the shoes that you're in. There's so much that you're trying to manage on a daily basis. You might feel that you've not got any time for storytelling. We are going to change that today. You also might think that you need to know and focus on every single marketing channel or that you have to be on the latest social media platform. You don't. What you need to get right is your business storytelling, and then you can apply it to whatever channel makes the most sense for your business. Like many of you, I once thought that storytelling was reserved for movies, books, and theater. And whilst I have always appreciated good storytelling, my career was really built through science and technology. And I didn't think that stories had much to do with those fields at all. However, I came to learn that storytelling actually props up everything in business, for every business in every industry. Yes, for communications and marketing and messaging, but even more than that, internal alignment employee motivation, and even your partnerships and your channels. My mother was a scientist, a biologist focused on virology and zoology, and she taught my sisters and me to ask questions, develop hypotheses, and test our ideas. We were taught to seek facts, data, and truth. She was also a poet and an author. My father reinforced all of this as an electrical engineer who enjoyed a sales and marketing career spanning five decades in high tech. He inadvertently indoctrinated me into the world of technology, Intel specifically, originally. I grew up surrounded by tales of Silicon Valley. In fact, I highly recommend Accidental Empires. It's a fun read. And my father's influence not only was there, but also ended up in me getting a computer science degree. We were soaked in story from a really young age. Both my parents read to us voraciously, as we do now for our children. I still have fond memories of being curled up on the settee, 
the couch with my dad and one of my sisters as he read us the Lord of the Rings. This is the actual copy, by the way, my mum's 1969 edition. The first books were all published together. And so I, the first time they were, sorry. So I took that passion for science and followed my mother's footsteps into creative writing and my father's footsteps into technology when I started my career in Intel's marketing department. Any fans of Red Dwarf, the original British Red Dwarf in the audience? So this is a 2002 shot from an Intel Counter-Striking Counter -Strike gaming event that I helped manage at the Science Museum in London. And yes, that is Lister from Red Dwarf. In the early days of my career, I thought storytelling was best suited to presentations, ad campaigns, and messaging. And it, it is relevant in those areas, but I didn't see it as explicitly being something to use in other areas of the business. Something else I also discovered in those early days of my career was Jeffrey Moore's Crossing the Chasm, a popular read at Intel. I love how it framed the chasm about how businesses that failed to connect with the early majority would fall into that chasm. It became a North Star for me. If business is nothing else, it's about connecting your product with the most lucrative of your potential markets, the early majority. And storytelling is about connecting people to ideas. So without realizing it, I started actually applying storytelling in my everyday work. In one instance, I created a superhero theme for a partner account manager training event at Intel. In another, I created this James Bond style sales campaign. Eventually, efforts such as these led to me being internally recruited as chief storyteller for Microsoft Dynamics, just as I was planning on leaving the company. Wow, I thought, it was all official. I was actually going to get paid to be a storyteller. Finishing my novels can wait. Little did I realize the journey I was about to embark on would result in me being able to help others unlock a big business secret. It's not about entertainment storytelling at all. Business storytelling may be related to entertainment storytelling, but it's different. And I'm going to share with you why it's different and how to use it. At Intel, a friend and mentor of mine, Nick Drew, told me once, always find if somebody's done it before, it'll save you time and energy. In other words, don't reinvent the wheel if you can avoid doing so. So we've always kept that in mind, kept out an eye for existing approaches that I could leverage in my work. As a newly minted chief storyteller, I sought to do the same thing in my new role, and I went on the hunt for existing wheels. But honestly, I struggled. I had turned down an external job offer to take this role. I really had to make it work. Besides, I wanted to. I discovered that people have been trying to apply, and successfully in many cases, applying storytelling to business as a way to cross the chasm. But there was a problem with how they were approaching it. Everyone leans into entertainment-based storytelling. Now, to be clear, there is some really interesting advice out there that uses storytelling, even if it wasn't the wheel that I was looking for. In my exploration, I found useful approaches to help with improving presentations, like Nancy Duarte's Resonate, which I absolutely loved. I've got two copies of that, one of which is signed by Nancy, and techniques like Bo Eason's for telling your personal story for impact. As I dug into these various methods and classic storytelling models, I couldn't find that wheel that I was looking for. But the available storytelling frameworks themselves have been created for a different end goal, entertainment. Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey, for example, to name but one famous framework can be 10, 12, or even a whopping 17 steps. Phrases like rising and falling action, character arcs, are just too much of a heavy lift for you as a busy professional. No matter how many rabbit holes I went down, I just couldn't find a storytelling wheel that worked for the repeatable application of storytelling in business. As Chip and Dan Heath explain in their wonderful book, Made to Stick, we're all subject to something called the curse of knowledge. This curse makes it hard for people outside of our areas of expertise to understand what we simply just get. Storytelling is no different. So people either get scared off 
from storytelling or they become an expert. There's not much middle ground. I really want to change that. I want everyone to be able to use it. I want you to be able to use it. And I know how phenomenally powerful that it is. The entertainment storytelling frameworks in business just weren't rolling. Those wheels were not there. I was thinking maybe I need to invent a new one, but I had a job to do. So I decided to focus on the essence of storytelling. I would use those entertainment frameworks and I would be a story interpreter, a focus on outside in customer centricity, a focus on the customer as the hero on their journey to hopefully buy from us. My team and I also created some terrific customer showcase films that focused on the customer and their experience. It reinforced for me how powerful storytelling was, but it also was reinforcing the issue. Not all content is created equal, and not all storytelling is a beautiful, epic video. Not all stories have to be big and bold. The power in story structures isn't just about these big, epic stories. I was discovering more and more that the power of story isn't limited to these kind of epic long form formats like movies and books. Not, not like those. So storytelling is, is much more than that. It's how we connect as human beings. And last time I checked, business is still human to human. And I realized that storytelling was playing an essential role in all these human interactions in business externally and connecting to the customer and partners, internally connecting individuals and teams together, running thought experiments, problem solving, and more. I was starting to experience storytelling's impact on business, but I felt like it was only scratching the surface. And I wanted to go more than just injecting elements of story into traditional marketing models or just using storytelling for the traditional things like ad campaigns or videos. And whilst there's value and use for the old models, I wanted to go beyond and I wanted to go beyond those big epic stories. So I started to wonder what actual business storytelling wheels might look like. I was inspired to take my experience that I was having in corporate America outside and start my own company and put all my energy into helping with business storytelling. But I had a young family at home and my wife was on sabbatical from her career after the birth of our second child. He's a little bit older than this now. Quitting was not an option. Everything changed on July 19th, 2015. Tragedy struck. My parents were both killed in a car crash. Now, I'm not going to go any further into any detail about this sad tale, but the fact that life is short it's never more apparent to me. And unsurprisingly, this was a major turning point in my life. I was against the backdrop of profound grief that I left Microsoft. What on earth was I thinking, right? But I honored them in the best way that I know how, helping others find success in their business with the power of storytelling. That's why I formed Go Narrative. I've created the business storytelling wheels so you don't have to. It's pretty cool. The truth is, is that you don't need to check every single marketing box, including the latest fancy social media channel. What you need is better storytelling. Storytelling lights everything up. It lights up all those channels that make sense for your business. Remember that big misconception of storytelling that is just for children, movies, books, and theater? It's not, those are just artifacts of what storytelling is really all about. And if some artifacts can be for pure entertainment, some artifacts can be for business engagement. When you apply storytelling in the right way in your business, you're more authentic. Your messaging is better. Your executives are more relatable. Your salespeople have increased confidence you generate increased demand and ultimately accelerate your sales pipe velocity. And 
Everything is more aligned and has greater integrity. Sounds pretty good, right? So I'd seen this power and I wanted to spread the word. The entertainment frameworks are pretty hard to apply to business and I really wanted to save you the hassle. But even after the initial founding of Go Narrative, I still relied on those existing frameworks, those artifacts, those entertainment artifacts. I worked to decode storytelling for business for you. We focused on this concept that we call a strategic messaging foundation. My product marketing experience fueled our value propositions, positioning, persona, customer journeys, and content marketing work that we we're doing for our clients. Selling these was a great place to start and we made good money doing so, but unlocking business storytelling was still the crown jewel that I was pursuing. Literature and film have their complex frameworks, but these are just artifacts of what storytelling really is. They are not storytelling. They are a form of storytelling. In fact, they're a form of story that is the telling of those stories, but it's so much more than that. It's so much more than movies and books. It's how we make sense of the world and you want your customers to make sense of you, don't you? But without simple, practical business frameworks, all there was, was these entertainment frameworks. Therefore, I continued to play this role of interpreter. That's when something interesting happened. The more that I practiced the art and the science of storytelling, the more I realized that storytelling was a value problem. And business is all about value, baby, <laughs> right? For our ancestors, the stories of value were told around the campfire. Value is things like which berries were edible, where the shelter was where the lions were. Evolution did its thing and rewarded with survival the tribes that practiced the most effective communications technique, which just so happens to be storytelling. Now, there are a few important things people get wrong with business storytelling, and I've discovered two carnal sins. What is sin number one? Okay, so sin number one is not including people and their transformation. This holds true even when the story is in short form content like a tweet or ad copy, and even when that person is not mentioned explicitly. That person has to exist within the context and it has to be triggered within your brain in some way, shape, or form. Without people, there is no story. I thought back to my time in corporate America. There was this one time I was sitting in the crowd of employees as this executive took the stage at a all hands meeting. We have a great story, he called out. The crowd was buzzing. This executive had just been promoted to CMO. The all hands was his moment. And I'll tell you what it is, the crowd leaned in. Our products work great together. Our new SKUs and pricing are exactly what our customer, customers need. And our user experience is fantastic. Okay, I waited for a story. Nothing. This was the CMO, need I remind you. There was no story. The presentation wasn't structured around story. There were a few anecdotes. That was it. And this was only one example of where I see the term story being abused. It was a product strategy or a marketing priority. It wasn't a story. He was focusing on logic and argument. And when you do that, you inspire your audience to argue with you. Stories are about people and their overcoming of obstacles, about transformation, about that change. This is the why of storytelling. And look, you know, words are important. When this brand released in the UK in the 1990s, it caused quite a stir. French Connection UK is what it stands for. But what did you see? Don't say it's a story if it's not a story. You're doing yourself a disservice and you're leaving money on the table. Okay, what's the second sin? So the second sin is actually not including a what, an element of value. It's just the fluffy storytelling. The whole point of storytelling is that what, is that element of value to deliver that valuable information so that you can act on it. We need to touch on both the head and the heart when we tell a story or when we construct a story or when we shape a campaign around the story. And when you do this, your audience can then act on the transformation to lead them to a better life. And they see this simulated for the first time in a story that they hear from you. 
When we hear a story, we simulate events in our minds. It teaches us how to create similar real world experiences. It shows us how life can be better. I had a great quote recently, uh, almost, I love it almost as much as, as this Jonathan Gottschall quote, but the quote that I heard was saying that the smartest people learn from other people's mistakes. If you go through your life only learning from your mistakes, you are leaving opportunity on the table. And it's through story that we understand others' mistakes and how to overcome them. As Jonathan Gottschall says, fiction is an ancient virtual reality technology that specializes in simulating human problems. But as I discovered, it's difficult to apply the entertainment storytelling structures in business. It's a kind of tri triangle peg round hole situation. You may get so far, but you're far from using it as a repeatable multi-tool for your business. But the dream was real. What if I could forge story frameworks specifically for business people? My mother's earliest memory was of her grandfather, my great-grandfather, who was a blacksmith, taking her and her sisters down into his smithy under pain of death should they tell their mother, my grandmother. She would not have been happy. My mother was five years old at the time. My great grandfather helped them lift up the hammer, crashed it down onto the hot metal, sparks flew, smoke filled the room, the horseshoe was thrust into the water to temper it and then back into the forge. He was also a farrier in the First World War and I've actually got some of his medals behind me. Maybe I should have one of them up here when I do this. I can show you show you it. So he, he helped them put it back into the water and then back into the flame and back onto the anvil yet again. Forging things takes work. And if I could do the work for you, then you wouldn't have to. If I could make the hammer and the anvil, all you would have to worry about was the horseshoe. So it's through these experiences that I forged these frameworks. And I was on a mission to find a way to simplify and unlock storytelling for business and for business people in a way that was accessible. And I'm pleased to report back that I did it. I've created a set of tools to enable business people to find success through storytelling. And here's the kicker, without having to rely on entertainment frameworks. Simple, accessible, and repeatable. But remember, there's a constant flow of new channels like TikTok and Clubhouse. The reality is, no matter the medium, the message needs to use storytelling to be effective. When I was playing my storytelling interpreter role to help our clients, which I continued doing after forming Go Narrative, if you recall, I discovered Paul Smith. I liked Paul Smith's car framework, context, action, results from Lead with a Story. With Paul Smith, I'd also found the first story structure not really explicitly tied to an entertainment framework. I liked car, but it wasn't enough. And in fact, specifically one of its problems was starting with too much context and not getting into the action when it comes to the telling part of storytelling. In the end, my realization was quite simple. Stories are like salt. Salt is elemental. Without it, food is bland. Some people even think watermelon is improved with, with salt. If I'm gonna have a dessert that's got salt in it, I'm probably gonna go with salted caramel ice cream instead of a salted watermelon. That's just me. <laughs> you want your message to be tasty, don't you? Stories make everything tastier. I wanted to create a tool as simple as salt, something anyone can add to their communications dishes. And you know what? None of these tools, channels, or features matter if they're not tasty. Storytelling is an essential element, just like salt. Don't prioritize the channels. Prioritize storytelling, then the channels. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Matthew, too much salt is a bad thing. Yes, it is. And that's exactly my point about entertainment storytelling and trying to use that in business and why they fail in business. They bring too much salt. 
too much cursive knowledge. So to avoid that, I prioritize the focus on three things. First of all, let's make the customer the hero and use, our, and use personas to guide what we know about them. Fueled by research, of course. Demonstrate the overcoming of challenges that these people, personas, or your audience experience. And focus less on products and services and more on the people whose lives your product touches and impacts. Honestly, if you do nothing else, please, please, please do this. It'll keep you outside in honest. So we use this approach along with my storytelling interpreter role to craft sales presentations, websites, and other content such as these examples. And I was working on crafting salt simple tools for business storytelling at that time. And this was awesome work that we did. We introduced the strategic narrative product as a part of our go-to-market playbook. We're doing a really exciting one right now. I can't wait to share when it when it's public. It, we did this with a company with value propositions, probably heard about value props, you know, unique selling propositions, positioning frameworks, personas, that persona's buyer journey, and a content strategy based on that journey. And we we made some, you know, we had a lot of fun doing that. And the cool thing about that work of personas, positioning frameworks, and all that is that they're really the components of business storytelling, or at least some of the components of business storytelling, not the framework though. Our strategic messaging foundation was ultimately the key that enabled me to unlock how to rewrite storytelling for business. And when our clients invest in our playbooks, they see real results. A mid-sized IT services firm here in the Seattle area saw consistency and unity in all their efforts across marketing, sales, and even consulting delivery. In another example, a corporate client saw a 40% increase in registrations for their event series just by apply, applying our approach. Everything else stayed consistent. Another client, another corporate client, saw campaign landing page improvements. Both the inbound and search impact, which was almost 4x increase in those page views, and then over 7x increase in page actions. Would you like that for your business? The whole point of the frameworks that I'm gonna share with you today is to craft useful tools that we could use with anyone and that you could also use. And they had to be really simple. Using them enabled us to help our clients and their products stand out to make what they say and do interesting. I love helping our clients find a better way to connect with their customers and a better way to clarity. And I found this all through storytelling. It's really no surprise. Our brains are wired for it. Our society is built on it. Here we live in the Seattle region. I mentioned that a second ago. It's surrounded by water, okay? The archipelago of Puget Sound has over 170 islands. By the way, there was a beluga whale sighting this week, amazing stuff. So my wife and I fantasize about living on one of these islands, maybe be a bit closer to the whales. Recently, we saw a property go on sale on Vashon Island and it checked all of our boxes. So we booked some time to go see it on the weekend, packed the kids into the car and headed to the ferry terminal. It was a new construction, but it had a bunch of issues. The sellers had run out of money and it showed. I've owned three homes. My parents owned a 450 year old farmhouse. So I know how much work a house can be, especially when they're 450 years old and made out of the same stone as Stonehenge. But if the foundation is good, if the frame is good, a house can last 450 years. And that, unfortunately, that for that house on Vashon Island, it was peppered with warning signs. It was never going to last that long. It reminded me that a great framework is a foundation for everything that's built on it. Right? So business people benefiting from our salt simple frameworks without being a storytelling expert is similar is, is related to this, right? And it's gonna require some key aspects. Need, needs a well-built foundation, needs to be simple and has to be able to be practically applied repeatedly. It should be something you can use every single day. If you get your storytelling right, you don't have to worry as much about what channel or marketing method you're using. The right business storytelling framework will help you get attention, 
be heard, and result in driving action that you want your audience to take. Get the foundation and the frame right. By the way, that house eventually sold for 20% less than its list price in a market where bidding wars are still driving everything up. Storytelling is a communications multi-tool. The good news is you don't need all of the latest tools and platforms. Whatever platform you're using when you use storytelling is going to make it tastier. And that's the secret I'm about to share. That's actually, so one false, it's actually three secrets. So one false belief I see is storytelling may be a powerful way to communicate, Matthew. It may be entertaining, but it's just too hard to apply in our business. Every time I've tried to use a hero's journey in my marketing, it's just too complicated and too much left. I have enough to worry about already, right? So we hear that. That's the fault of the entertainment frameworks. That leads us to secret number one, a quick and easy story hack to increase profitability without learning all the nuances of entertainment storytelling. So another false belief that we hear is, okay, I get it, I'm sold on storytelling, I love the simple framework, but I still can't really figure out how to create a story that works. My stories don't have a heart. I have so much detail, so many products, so many features I'm trying to figure out how to tell the story about. I can't really find the emotional connection or realistic emotions that are gonna make the story interesting and engaging. Hence, secret number two, a way to build and tell confident business stories that connect with the hearts and the minds of your customers. That leads me to another false belief that I see. Okay, I get it. I, I, I feel empowered to go tell stories that connect, to create content that does that, but I just can't get the support, the funding, the political clout I need to use more storytelling in the business because I can't show how storytelling connects to the business or how our stories will all connect to each other and align and so that they're all pulling the wagon in one direction. And that leads us to secret number three, how to tell the right story to connect your audience to your product, move your customers to act and get you the support you need by demonstrating that connection to your business. Let's talk about secret number one. Take out your pen and paper, get some notes and I'll walk you through this framework. I call it the 3D story framework. Now, remember, I don't want, and I didn't want to enter into the entertainment storytelling space. So it's gonna be simpler than that. I wanted to focus on business storytelling. And you know, I couldn't find any how-tos for applying it to business and marketing in a repeatable manner. I couldn't find a wheel that did the job, a wheel that worked for that repeatable application of storytelling in business, something simple like a wheel, it's very simple. And this kind of stuff just wasn't gonna cut it too much salt, am I right? I knew that if I could forge a salt simple story framework, I would become, it would become the foundation for our client work and we could use it as well. Now, forging frameworks can be tricky, but the good news is you don't have to forge those frameworks because I've done all that legwork for you. So that's makes it easier for you. It's a good thing, right? So this, I, the, th the thing is as well, like one of the things about entertainment storytelling is it's interesting, it's exciting. And I did want to retain that. And I believe that frameworks and the right frameworks can help with that because I believe they, they are empowering. I believe they unleash creativity. For example, there are five primary colors in the world. But just look at all the paintings and the art there are from those five primary colors. There are 12 notes on a musical scale, but just look at all the music in the world. Stories define our world. When you're in control of your company's story, you hold the world in your hands, even if you don't think you're a natural born storyteller. It's a communications multi-tool for internal alignment, pitching your ideas to your boss, exploring product strategy, crafting position, product positioning, defining the strategic narrative, the big story for your company. And yeah, of course, it's useful for campaigns and messaging as well. But when you get the foundation right, you go beyond the telling. You unlock its power. Campbell and Snyder wanted to help authors and filmmakers craft stories with multiple characters, desires, transformations, and learnings. I want to help you use storytelling and business. 
Your craft is your unique business. Your craft isn't storytelling. It shouldn't have to be storytelling. Even natural born storytellers can benefit from structures designed for business that help with practical application. I know this myself, I've experienced it firsthand from our frameworks, even being a natural born storyteller. People should be able to enjoy living in a beautiful home with no worries about the state of the foundation, safe in the knowledge that it was well built. Okay, you ready for it? That first framework? Here it is, the 3D story framework. It's practical, it's straightforward. It helps you see your story from all angles. I was inspired by Nike's Just Do It, packing a whole bunch of punch into just three words, packing all that important stuff in a way that represents more than those three words. If you remember earlier, I said a story has to include people. Just do it doesn't technically include a person. It's no official plot, but what Nike are doing with those three magical words is they are reaching into your brain and pressing buttons intentionally. When you hear just do it, you put yourself at the center of that. You think about what doing it means for you. You think about the excuses you're making for not doing it. So you are at the center and your transformation and changes at the center. But more than that, I just love how they pack so much into those three words and it inspired me. 3D stands for desire, difficulty, and a fancy French word, de nous more. I'll get to that one in a second. In a nutshell, people, your customer, the hero, if you will, want something, desire. But life isn't easy, is it, right? Things stand in the way and crop up as we try and solve things. That's the difficulty. And I chose the fancy French word denouement, not just because it's hard to spell, but because it means the untangling of the knot. What a wonderful metaphor. How was it untangled? With what? Was a specific approach you used? Don't do what 10 year old Matthew did and use some scissors to try and cut a knot for a kite. Actually, I think I was younger than that. Probably should say I was younger than that. Didn't go well, right? So, but how did you untangle that knot? I love that metaphor. In my story journey, I've known the importance of contrast, change, transformation. I've experienced it viscerally myself. I also know that every single business decision is a transformation, be it big or small, or a decision not to embark on a transformation, but it's all about transformation. And if people could easily understand the why and the how of another person's solution to such a transformation, they could also be persuaded to go on that same path, a path to purchase from you. We designed our 3D story framework to be deceptively simple, a rich microcosm of nuances, details, and context packed into those three magical words. From all those years as a story interpreter for business, I knew that if you pulled on the correct threads, you'd extract what was needed to construct a story. And it should come as no surprise that we use this 3D story framework every single day. We use it in our marketing, in our sales conversations. We use it in this presentation. We use it to understand prospective clients. For our clients, we use it for many things. Here's a great example of a landing page above the fold copy that utilized the 3D framework. I'll have to bring in a script for next week or the week after for a video that we've just created as well. It's another fantastic example. We also use storytelling as a practical tool to break down value propositions based on real customer stories. We do that in our workshops. We use these tools to prompt in our workshops to extract all that wonderful insight from our clients and from their customers. We use it to create train the trainer guides with an outside in perspective. And we obviously use it to coach our clients on how to quickly and easily tell stories without the baggage of entertainment story structures. Now, whilst it may be true that we're all natural born storytellers, it's also true that it's different spinning a yarn about somebody cutting you off on the motorway than it is to defining the strategic narrative for an energy compliance company. The latter is a little bit harder. I love this quote from Ben Horowitz. Storytelling is important and it does take work. work. But remember the forging. We've made the anvil and the hammer for you it takes some of that hard work off of your plate. With the 3D framework, you have an easy on-ramp to understanding and applying storytelling. 
I'm excited at its simplicity because that means it's easier for you to remember and practice. We had found a way to make using storytelling more accessible to business people, and I couldn't have been more excited. Okay, great. So you've got your story structure down and you're starting to riff out some stories. Stories need emotion. We must feel the story. We won't remember things if it doesn't touch us. Remember earlier, I told you about the framework we developed that helped me infuse the emotions into business storytelling? Okay, we're gonna cover it. And it's, uh, it's called the Story Meet Method. And we're gonna get to it in just a second. So emotions are essential ingredients in moving people to act, to buy from you. We make decisions based on emotions. We make decisions in our limbic brain. We then justify with our cortex, our neocortex, so our language, logic, and of course our story structures exist. But we make those decisions based on emotion. And if you ignore emotion, you are ignoring it at your own peril. You have to have the head and the heart. And I want you to feel confident crafting stories with an emotional punch. Now, while you might get this when you follow the very detailed hero's journey, it's just too much. It's why so many business people struggle to apply storytelling with an emotional punch. They go and they try to use the hero's journey and eventually give up on it entirely. I experienced that as my role as a story interpreter. I was worried that the stories that I crafted wouldn't have the emotional punch to engage our audience or satisfy our clients. I agonized over it. I don't want you to agonize over it. I want to take that pain away from you. When we delivered our very first strategic narrative, I was on pins and needles. What would they think of the narrative metaphor I had chosen of an eagle soaring? Would all of that crafted to engage emotionally fall flat? Thankfully, they loved it. Thankfully, they loved it. Getting to that emotionally resonant place can be hard, hard, and it does take work. And it was through this experience that I found a way to unlock it for you. I was lucky enough in, that my grandmother lived in the same village as my parents in her twilight years. This meant that I got to see her on my visits back from university. I struggled at university seems so long ago now. <laughs> Maybe it was my bright, shiny object syndrome. Maybe it was my ADHD or my dyslexia. Either way, I found it really, really tough. One day on a visit back home, I stopped by my gran for a cup of tea. Ain't no party like my nana's tea party. Anybody get the Flight of the Concords reference here? I love Flight of the Concords. Andrea, thank you for joining. Great to see you, miss you as well. Lo lovely to see you online. Thank you so much for stopping by. So my grand said to me, Matthew, if degrees were easy, <laughs> they would hand them out after A-levels. A-levels are the equivalent of the last two years of high school in the USA. But she was right. It made me think of my mother's forge story. And no, I didn't spill the beans to my grand about my mum in the smithy. I kept my grand's comments in mind. Nothing worth working for is a handout. But if I could do the bulk of that hard work, the forging for you, and give you a tool to inject emotion into your business stories, I could get you to story success that much more quickly. If I can create the forge, the anvil, and the hammer, then all you had to do was create the horseshoe. Entertainment stories frameworks have a complex, detailed structure. And complexity can hamper creativity. Remember the five primary colors, right? You don't need a lot of complexity to create something. The 12 notes is another one. My youngest, by the way, who's a lot older than he was in that picture now, is learning the violin. And it's wonderful to see him learning about the structure of music, the story of music, the language of music. But you don't need a complex framework. Complex frameworks distract from something critical to storytelling, and that's the emotions. Early days of COVID, it hit me. Having spent so long trying to figure out the emotional stuff, and it, it was in those early days of COVID that it really crystallized. The importance of the right emotions in business stories really started to become more and more obvious for me. Not all emotions are created equal. In those early days, I was doing my best, early days of COVID, I was doing my best with the rest of the planet to keep calm and carry on. And I was on a hunt for ways to make sure we were deeply respectful of the intense emotional landscape of the time, whether it was what we said, how we helped our clients, whatever it happened to be. 
Speaking of emotions, our family love Star Wars. Originals, prequels, sequels, toys. We have more Star Wars Lego than you can shake a stick at. And this week, there's been about a dozen brand new interpretations of spaceships built in our house by my nine-year-old. I've even met George Lucas twice, but that's another story. Email me and I'll tell you all about it. I remember reading an article about the lightsaber battles in Star Wars, how the actors had to practice, since for so many of them, sword fighting was a new experience and not natural at all. Each character brought their own inimitable style to the sword play. It wasn't just parry, block, and slice. There was an art, an emotion to it. And each character was different. Christopher Lee played the character of Count Dooku. Sword play wasn't new for Christopher Lee. He played sword fighting roles before many of us were even born. Here he is in 1973's The Three Musketeers. To breathe life into a story, you must infuse technique and science with character, art, and emotion. Just like Christopher Lee breathed life into Count Dooku's lightsaber battling style. The place to start is by asking, what truths is the transformation or change in the world forcing on your customers, their organizations, and their businesses? The good news is that I have crafted a way for you to quickly add emotion into your stories. Better yet, you don't have to be a creative literary genius award-winning film director to do so. We call it the story meet method. You can pull this framework out and use it to infuse emotions into your story and to meet your customers where they are, not just rationally, but emotionally too. Okay, you ready for it? I am. <laughs> so if you understand what moves people, you can craft things that result in action. Emotions are key, right? So with meat, you don't have to maintain all the steps of the hero's journey to find the emotional response you're looking for. It's a simple hack to help you find the right emotions to focus on for your story, for the, the specific audience that you're focused on. Morals, we think about these as our, the customer perspective on the good, the bad, the indifferent, how they kind of frame up the, wor wor the world. You can bring values in as you think about morals as well. Then essential emotions, the feelings that exist for your audience around a topic. Truths are concepts that the audience holds dear and central to their decision making, regardless of what that topic happens to be. And hopefully you're starting to see how this is different to happy, sad, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. There's a lot more that you can access when it comes to emotions. It, the, the meat framework is your iceberg hack to bring emotions into your business stories. What it enables is that quick way to connect to the things that people care about in business. And not all emotions are created equal, equal, only focusing on happiness, sadness, or whatever. It's not specific enough. You must look beyond that to the context of a particular audience. Morals shape and guide business culture, office locations, affiliations, donations. Again, values do as well. They can even affect collaboration culture within a company. Essential emotions ooze out of interactions in business. Elation for success, fear for career snafus, excitement for ideation, collaboration, and product launches. Truths frame up a business. Things are just a certain way sometimes, right? They can be, this can be affected by the industry, the founders, the headquarters, where it's, the country it's from, the culture there, and much, much more. If you start pulling on the thread, with the story meet method, you will start to unravel the complex cardigan of emotions in no time. That knot is coming back, isn't it? The knot from Denouement. Getting emotions right in your storytelling builds empathy, which creates the conditions for engagement. And I'm so excited to share this simple framework with you so that you can unlock emotions in your business storytelling. There's no greater feeling of success that we get when we impact people's lives, because that's what business is about. You spend so much time at work, so do I. <laughs> You're touching people's lives and nothing makes me happier than when people say things like Hannah from Anne Plus did. This is the kind of client response that we live for at Go Narrative. Remember earlier when I told you about the frameworks we developed to help tell the right stories, bring consistency to all stories, that alignment, right? To deeply 
connect to the business as well. This is the big one. <laughs> this one is going to make sure that all the stories you tell are the right stories, and it's a big deal. If you ever tried to learn about storytelling, the why of storytelling, right? There's actually precious little out there. I kind of covered that a bit today. The, there's no existing wheels, right? And when people talk about storytelling business, they really aren't using storytelling. Seriously, go and Google storytelling right now. Hit, I'm lucky. Now don't read it yet, save it for, for later, but I'm almost certain that the first article is, that is gonna show up for you is this HubSpot article. Save it for later. Now, not to throw HubSpot under the bus, but when you read it later, you'll notice a few things. Not only is it not structured as a story, there also isn't a story anywhere to be seen in it. And I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure you're starting to realize by now why I've gone on this mission to help with business storytelling. I've got a lot more work to do. Incidentally, when you look at that, that's that that article. Think about the 3D framework and how maybe the article could have been structured differently. Look for emotions. Look through that meat filter and see if you can see anything that pops out for you there. You, you probably guess what you're going to find, and there's not a lot. The power of story goes far beyond the content of storytelling. We can actually use it to shape the world. I remember in January of 2017, as I sat with my wife on the sofa talking about what to call the company, I landed on Go Narrative for two reasons. Firstly, I wanted to convey action, achievement, hence the word go. Business is all about moving things forward, making things, selling things, making people's lives better. And while the story, 3D story framework helps you with the crafting of a story and the story meet method is a quick, reliable way to find the most appropriate emotions, the paradox of storytelling is that it's not just the telling. I was looking for a way to tie it all together and ensure it was all rooted in the business. This is beyond storytelling. This is narrative, and that's why I chose that second word. Narrative is the big stories, the big picture. For example, your favorite movie includes a collection of stories that accrue up to the overall narrative of the film. But I had two fundamental questions. Firstly, how do we create authenticity by tying all those stories together with some kind of golden thread? That led me to an even more profound question. How do we ensure that the stories we tell are the correct stories to be telling? Stories that matter for the business, that drive action in the business, while also feeding that authenticity and trust it builds with customers. I hope you're starting to see that businesses have a different demand on storytelling than movies and books. In those early days of solving the business storytelling problem, I was hooked, right? <laughs> I geeked out so much on storytelling. You re probably recall me talking about the problems I get running into trying to get the business to benefit from storytelling when I was still working for somebody else. I remember trying to go with, to my general manager at Microsoft uh, and talk about the stages of the hero's journey didn't go so well. I don't recommend it. You can just taste the curse of knowledge with this stuff, can't you? Just create the presentation for me, Matthew. Make sure it's got storytelling in it, right? He wasn't interested in learning. Most business people are just simply too busy to remember all of this on top of the products, marketing campaigns, sales plans, partner events, office politics, forecasting. If it isn't immediately obvious how it connects to the business, it won't get used. So how do you connect your storytelling to your business? You might be wondering, how on earth do I even get started? And this is where that paradox of storytelling manifests. It's not just the telling. And if you just focus on the telling, you won't get the most out of story. And I want you to get the most out of it. Story is a driving force behind how our brain works and precisely how it works in relation to getting along and getting ahead in society, as Will Storr says in the wonderful science of storytelling, if you're interested in getting into the curse of knowledge on this stuff. But remember, even with this thing, 
that is so natural and so simple that we use it every day, just like salt. People try the entertainment frameworks, fail and give up. The salt gets spilt. In most cases, people will only dabble, sprinkle a little story into some presentations or to some campaign. I want to help you get out of the jar to see the big picture. Think of your favorite movie. There are actually multiple stories in any given movie, all woven together into that narrative of the film. And there's a moral or a metaphor that encapsulates all of it, a shortcut to the meaning of the film. But when you first watched that movie, you didn't know what it was. You were in the jar, consuming each story as it was served up to you. In The Wizard of Oz, the narrative is that one's true purpose is found within oneself. There's no place like home. And Dor Dorothy was determined to find it. And by some uh, arguments, apparently she was the whole thing was a dream. It's a bit debatable, depending on the, the book versus the movie. The stories of the Scarecrow, the Tin Man and the Lion all support that narrative. They all had what they sought all along. The Tin Man wanted a heart. He was the one bringing compassion to the journey. The, the, the Scarecrow wanted brains, and he was the one solving all the problems for the travelers on their journey. And the lion wanted courage. But guess who was the one who was defending them on their journey? And that's what the story stands for. And that's what the metaphor of the yellow brick road stands for. Your yellow brick road is inside of you. At the risk of mixing metaphors, Think of a brick wall. Now, imagine that wall, not as multiple bricks, but imagine it as a single tall, thin wall made of fired clay. Such a wall is never built. Why? It's weak. When you have multiple bricks connected by mortar, it's strong. It's to do with the forces exerted by each of those bricks on the bricks around it. It enhances its strength. A narrative is like mortar. It holds all your stories together and together, they are more robust. What makes up that mortar for a business narrative? What's well, the meaning of a business? If we can draw that out, we can craft a narrative that uses it as a shortcut to understanding for your business. What insights do you get when you look at a business? Employees, customers, partners, the founders. How does all of that and what's being done by the business relate to the changing world? What are the trends, the facts, the figures, the hopes, the dreams of the market? How does it relate to all of that? How does it relate to the transformation that your customers are trying to navigate in the world? The pressure that is exerted on people and how they navigate their way to success. These are the raw materials, the themes and connections that inform a narrative. This is about more than storytelling. And this is the problem with the paradox. People see it just for the telling, just for entertainment. It's why most people only get as far as learning how to apply storytelling to presentations. They don't see it as something deeply connected to the business, but it is. The fact is your company strategy is deeply linked to your story. What does Ben Horowitz have to say about this? In good companies, the story and the strategy are the same thing. He goes on to say that then the output of all the work that a company makes is the story. And it is because that's story making. You have to make a story before you tell it, whether you write it or you live it. And a strategy without a story is an incomplete strategy. Is your strategy complete? That's what I was able to uncover, a way to create a strategic narrative rooted in the business. Again, not only without having to memorize entertainment frameworks, but getting more out of storytelling for business than presentations and messaging. The framework, is our TRIPS storytelling methodology. Okay, this is, this is my favorite. <laughs> With a TRIPS storytelling methodology, we're able to ensure that those stories have a common foundation, are aligned, and are deeply connected 
to the business. And TRIPS, as you probably guessed by now, is an acronym. But what does it stand for? Transformation. What change is going on in the world? How is that affecting companies, governments, people? How is it affecting your customer? This is the why you're embarking on this mission in the first place. It's why you invented that new product or developed that new business plan or are crafting that new marketing campaign. R is reasons to believe. There's a head and a heart to this. On the head side, what are the market facts, the data, the trends? What provides evidence of the transformation? And the other aspect is why would an individual have a reason to believe? What's their aspiration? What's the end state they want to get to? The pain that's removed, the achievement that they're able to get. What is it? I is for innovation. This is your secret source. This is your transformation winning tool. This might be your USP. It might be your value prop proposition. It is not the laundry list of things that you can do. Amazon's innovation for the whole business is customer care. Put that above all else. And in doing so, created a loyal following. It doesn't have to be the product. It can be an element of the service. It can be a character of your company. P is for problems. Okay, so as we've already touched on a little bit with the denouement, but this goes deeper, is what problems does the trans transformation impose, right? So things are changing, creates problems. Okay, so what is that? The second is, okay, I'm ready to get going, dealing with this transformation. What problems stand in my way to even get going? And the third is, okay, I'm going. What roadblocks are popping up in the way? What moose are running out into the road? And S is for stories. Stories from the world that articulate the transformation, the reasons to believe, the innovation. Anecdotes, metaphors that represent the transformation and act of overcoming it. For example, there might be a story out there from the market, of what's happening in the world that represents a transformation. You might have a story that represents where somebody wants to get to and the struggle they're experiencing. For innovation, you might have your founder's story and why they invented this in the first place. Just like you heard from me today, why I invented this in the first place. So look for those stories. You know, the reality is this stuff can happen naturally. Not all the time, but it can. There are certain cases where entrepreneurs are so passionate about solving a big, hairy problem that they go through these steps unconsciously. It's why unicorns exist. And in many ways, we didn't invent these frameworks. We uncovered them and codified them so that you could use them. Kind of like having a hypothesis about the universe, right? Like test it, figure out what's true, what isn't true based on the data, based on the impact that it has in the world. Now, you could always roll the dice, but you don't have to. And you no longer have to cross your fingers and pray that you have the secret to doing it every time. This isn't the prey zone. This is, this is a zone where you can remove that because you've now got the frameworks. When you craft a narrative with the storytelling, trip storytelling methodology, you'll create a message that frames your strategy for transformation and how it relates to the market. Here you see examples of the questions you would ask yourself about your narrative as you put it together. And it will help you harvest the right inputs. When you use this framework, you will get the right inputs for your stories. And you'll have a golden thread that ties everything together. And then you pull out our first two frameworks and create some stories. And you'll, in, in doing so, you're going to have consistency, repeatability, and, it, and simplicity in doing so, which is what we need in business. We need a wheel, right? In our business, we use the trip storytelling methodology internally and externally. Internally, we use it to shape our own narrative and guide the work that we do for our, our clients. Externally, we use it to diagnose a new client, to craft our materials, run coaching sessions, provide the baseline for creating the strategic narrative. For example, we'll run a workshop with a client to extract all of their inputs for each trips element. Then we'll test, research, expand on those concepts. We use this to identify cultural and meta-narratives that can be used as a narrative metaphor to accelerate understanding. 
just like the yellow brick road. Now, these narrative metaphors, along with that foundation of stories based on our 3D story framework, are then used to craft a literal written strategic narrative. This has helped our customers achieve things like that 40% increase in registrations for their event series by implementing our complete approach. Our strategic narrative is our golden thread, one that binds everything together and helps you cut through the noise. After we applied our frameworks, we saw deal sizes like 10 exercise. These engagements included multiple of our storytelling services. And of course, our favorite deliverable, the strategic narrative. And I'm thrilled. My journey with storytelling went from entertainment stories and the hero's journey to brain science and the cogs of society. I learned that storytelling wasn't just about the telling of stories or even just a way of being interesting and engaging. I learned that there's a process that is fundamentally linked to how our brain works and how we see the world, how we communicate, even the problem solving on which we embark. It fuels our lives and the businesses we run. Why wouldn't you use this? I also learned how to align narratives to business and to create a narrative that connects to a human understanding of the world as a bridge to your product or service. I learned how to use these narratives to intentionally create stories that align and inspire people to act. Now, you've got it. You've got the secret to unlock storytelling success for business. You, with this, you'll be able to create energy and interest for your program, your campaign, your storytelling initiative itself. You'll be able to build more alignment, get more people on board, buy-in. We, we all know that term, right? It's on this energy that you can then engineer large-scale, meaningful narratives and campaigns that convert and trigger that right mix of hormone release at scale. This is storytelling for action. So let me ask you a question. If you follow what I showed you in secret number one, started quickly crafting and telling compelling practical business stories, and then you did what I showed you in secret number two and ensured that those business stories connect with and move people to act, and then you use secret number three to tie all those stories together and to deeply connect them to your business with that narrative framework, do you think you might be able to be more successful? Do you think you could drive more demand and accelerate your sales pipe? Do you think you could build more alignment and a happier team? How many of you are feeling excited right now? I always am, but this topic excites me. <laughs> How many of you feel like a bit overwhelmed? We've covered a lot today, even with three simple frameworks, which, hello, that's the problem with the entertainment frameworks, even with these three simple ones. There's a lot to learn. Drinking from a fire hose, am I right? I get it. I get it. It's impossible to go over everything in a 60-minute presentation. I had some presenting for action coaching once, and uh, I was so worried about getting everything across. I had to cover all these bases and talk about the product. And So uh, I had this presentation coaching, and the coach said to me, Matthew, you've got one hour <laughs> One hour out of 24 in one, that's one for one day. You've got one hour, right? You've got one hour. What can you achieve in one hour? You're an expert. You know the product. You know the campaigns. You know the company. You know all this stuff. You can't transfer all that to the audience in an hour. What you can do in an hour is get them to take the next step. I hope you're able to see the next step that you can take today and also how by using storytelling and narrative, you can get your customers to take the next step. This is storytelling for action. And I wanna help you with that. That's why we're launching the Storytelling for Action program. And here it is. Super excited to share this with you today. It takes everything you've heard and it leads you through the whole process. We've got recipes, we've got the ingredients you should include, 14 how-to flows, over 300 hacks. 
here's a bit of a, a, a higher level view of it so you can get an impression of what it is. We take you through the whole process. You literally can take this and do everything Go Narrative is doing to get to today, today. And of course, we would love to help you apply it. So we even provide the workflow to create a strategic narrative itself and how to use it. Use the trips and 3D frameworks to do so. So you can be one of the first people to get access to our Storytelling for Action program when you sign up at this link. All you need to start applying storytelling in business. Six playbooks, a 12 part course covering all the elements, templates to use with your team, access to our virtual clinic, and a bonus customer advocacy pack. Our mission is to help you harness the power of storytelling for your business without relying on entertainment storytelling frameworks. Storytelling for action is for you if you're an entrepreneur, a marketer, or an executive looking to get attention, be heard, and sell more. We're going to help you challenge your status quo to find a better way to clarity. So sign up at www gonarrative.com forward slash SFA. And you'll be one of the first to hear of Storytelling for Action's general availability. And as a bonus, you'll immediately get our weekly business storytelling tips newsletter. So you can start applying this and learning more about it as you move forward on your storytelling journey. Thank you so much for joining today. I, I'm so excited for Storytelling for Action. I'm going to stick around for a few minutes to answer questions. If you've got questions, go ahead and type them in the in the uh, the chat on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitch, you name it. I uh, see again seeing uh, Andrea's uh, message here. And um, okay, so let's see. Scroll down. Don't worry if you can't think of any right now. We're going to be back at the same time next week. And next week, we've got a special treat. We've got a friend of mine who is going to join us and talk about storytelling in a very different field, but it's going to help you understand how deep stories affect us as human beings. It will be a bit of a therapy session. So come back, get a refresher next week. But in the meantime, let's have a look. Um, why do you bang on about movies and books when you say this isn't about movies and books? It's a metaphor. It's a shortcut to understanding. You understand those things, so I can use those as a bridge. Am I saying you should use them, though, to actually apply to your business? I'm not, am I? Right. So that that's a good way to kind of help you understand, but then we've created the actual tools for you then to go and apply that. Well, here's, an, here's a related one. That's a bit different, though. Why don't you have heroes or things like that in your frameworks? Because we're trying to avoid the curse of knowledge of entertainment storytelling. And it's all in there, right? The, the, the important stuff about how your brains work on story is all in there. For heroes, that's embedded in desire. Desire doesn't stand alone. It needs a person to breathe life into it. It's like Nike's just do it. You breathe life into that when you hear it. So that person, the hero is your customer. It's also why we don't talk about things like context or backstory. Storytelling for action and the hacks to help you include all these necessary elements whilst being easy to remember. And that's the beauty, right? Today, if you do nothing else, remember the three frameworks. 3D framework, okay? 3D, see your story from all different angles, right? Meet, meet your customers where they are, okay? And then trips. You're taking people on a journey with your stories and your narratives. And if you can remember those three things, you can immediately start going and telling stories. In fact, I would challenge you. First thing tomorrow morning or tonight at dinner or when you're on the phone with a loved one or a friend, tell a story about your day and use the 3D framework. What did you want? What were you trying to do? Pain you're trying to solve, somewhere you're trying to get to, driving, trying to get to an appointment. Difficulty, what happened, what stood in your way, got cut off by this absolute crazy nutter who was driving like a maniac, right? Denouement, what did you do? I was freaked out. I double checked my mirrors again, even though I thought I was driving safe. Was there anybody else around? I cut, I, you know, I made sure that before I braked, there was nobody right behind me. I slowed down. I gave the person a wide berth and I maybe pulled into another lane to, to kind of keep myself safe avoid 
road rage, that kind of stuff. Let somebody else have the road rage, right? So think of a thing, just take something that's happened in your day and apply the 3D story framework. That is your gateway. That's your gateway drug to business storytelling. You start using that today and you will be able to apply that to your business and you will be doing business storytelling. And you won't have to worry about any of these complex frameworks or anything like that. Okay, do one more question. Let's see. What's the biggest mistake people make with storytelling? Well, there's two, right? One, not understanding it enough to use it effectively, like my CMO example and the brand French Connection UK, right? FC UK and the importance of, of language and of, of meaning. So don't abuse the term. Call it out when you see it. If somebody says our story is this and they don't, it's nothing to do with a story, they are doing themselves and you and your business a disservice. You're leaving that opportunity, that whole world of tools out of your equation. You're making your life more difficult when you abuse that term and you let people get away with abusing it. Friends, don't let friends abuse the word story. <laughs> Number two, the second biggest mistake is pursuing entertainment structures. Getting lost, getting put off, and then being in the same position, not taking advantage of this massive tool. It's a great set of tools that you can use to find more success in your business. And that's, that's the purpose of Go Narrative's existence, and it's what I'm trying to help everybody, every business person on earth with. See how long it takes, right? Brilliant, okay, so we will be back next week. Like I said, we've got a special guest next week. We're gonna have a little bit more of an interactive discussion. And we come back every week to give you the opportunity to come and understand how to do this stuff, to understand the context of where it came from so that you can also start to role model that in your business. You come to this every week, ask us questions. You're gonna be setting yourself up for those initial steps. And of course, sign up for Storytelling for Action. It's so cool. Seriously, the playbook, it's 105 pages of playbook. We are literally dotting the I's and crossing the T's to get the package all fully put together with the training and the frameworks and the community. In fact, if you've got feedback on community, it's one of the final things we're looking at dotting our I's and crossing our T's on. We could use Telegram, we could use Discord, we could use Slack, we could use LinkedIn. Want to keep it private and keep it, uh, so you can ask questions of us and you can also ask questions of each other so you can benefit from the learnings that other business people are going through on this journey to unlock the power of storytelling. And quite frankly, just to have it there on your bat belt, right? We're not trying to make this the be all and everything, right? We're trying to help Batman, right? We're, we're, we're Alfred trying to help Batman. You're Batman. You use, you're using all sorts of tools, all sorts of techniques. If you're not using storytelling, you don't have your grappling hook, you're not going to get to the top of the building. So please, Make sure that you're take, taking something away from today. Go sign up for Storytelling for Action and you'll immediately start getting those little tips and tricks that we share every single week. You'll get access to our blogs and all that good stuff as well. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best and your story journey. I'm a story addict. I hope I can make you a story addict too. And I hope the Storytelling for Action helps bring enormous value to your business. Thank you so much and we'll see you very, very soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.